Hi students, welcome to Easy Nursing Lectures. So today we're gonna talk about our second part of the electrolyte imbalance, and that includes sodium, sodium deficiency, sodium excess, everything. Okay, let's start with it. So what is the normal value of sodium in our body? It is 135 to 145 milli equivalent per liter, or we can write it as 135 to 145 milli mole per liter. Okay. If we talk about common food sources that include sodium, everything that is related to salt. okay include salt uh, sodium because you know that sodium is nacl okay so it includes the sodium so butter cheese canned food that are present in the can okay processed food like lays chips uh, etc that you eat okay ketchup mustard soy sauce milk and table salt of course that we use in our kitchen so these are the common food sources from where we get the sodium okay now talk about hyponatremia hyponatremia why we call sodium uh, why we write sodium as na positive because na means natremia okay and hypo that means its uh, level falls below 135 milli equivalent per liter normal is 135 145 and when it falls below 135 it will be hyponatremia okay so sodium imbalances usually are associated with fluid volume imbalances they are always related to fluid volume imbalance maybe there is excess of fluid or maybe there are uh, uh, deficiency of food okay that causes that imbalance okay so what are the causes causes pneumonics is uh, no na that means uh, you ha you have deficiency of sodium so that is why no na in your body okay so from n we have na excretion increase when sodium excretion is increased out of your body then there will be deficiency state in your body okay in case of like excessive diaphoresis you are sweating too much diuretics you are taking diuretics too much that will uh, excrete a lot of water from your body and hence there is a state called uh, hyponatremia okay vomiting diarrhea wound drainage kidney disease this all will lead to uh, more sodium excretion out of your body okay now from o you have overload of fluids with congestive heart failure okay like uh, in congestive heart failure there is fluid filled in your body okay so there will be overload of fluid okay and in case of renal failure renal failure means that your kidneys are not uh, working properly and that is why they are not excreting water properly and hence it will cause the overload of the fluid okay what else Uh, na positive intake low when you are taking sodium very low like you are fasting or low salt diet you are taking or nothing per mouth then it will cause a state of the hyponatremia okay and uh, from a we have anti diuretic hormone over secreted uh, over secreted this condition is also known as siadh okay so what is siadh if i particularly talk about it it is syndrome of inappropriate of inappropriate anti diuretic hormone secretion okay this is what we call it as s i a d h okay so basically in this what happen there is over release of the anti diuretic hormone okay which will cause our body to retain the water okay and this will create a state of overload of flu uh, fluid again and this will again cause hyponatremia okay so let's talk about the signs and symptoms we have salt loss because there is a salt loss in your body you have hyponatremia so th this is the mnemonic goes with okay from s we have seizures and coma okay from a we have abdominal cramps and attitude changes attitude changes mean uh, in respect of the a uh, mental ability of the person and it will lead to confusion okay the person will remain lethargic okay tendon reflexes diminished trouble concentrating his tendon reflexes got diminished and there will be trouble concentrating as we already written here there will be confusion okay loss of urine and appetite there uh, no hunger okay and uh, loss of urine orthostatic hypotension that means hypotension means low blood pressure state uh, related to your posture orthostatic means related to your posture okay maybe sitting maybe standing causing the hypotension okay so overactive bowel sound there will be bowel sound which are overactive shallow respiration spasm of muscles so this is what we call signs and symptoms of uh, hyponatremia okay then we have intervention same 
previous one monitor status of the cardiovascular respiratory renal gi neuromuscular every system you will check the status because electrolyte imbalance will cause a bad effect on them okay now if hyponatremia is with hypovolemia hypo, uh, hyponatremia means uh, that means low sodium with hypovolemia that means low fluid or fluid deficit state you can give iv sodium chloride uh, to restore the sodium and the fluid level okay iv sodium chloride nacl okay you will administer it now if hyponatremia is with hypervolemia uh, that means high fluid level okay and you will give osmotic diuretics because it will promote the water excretion rather than the sodium it will mainly focus on uh, reserving the sodium and then releasing the excess of water in case of overflow that is what we call as hypervolemia okay increase oral sodium intake you will of course increase the oral sodium intake and hyponatremia precipitates lithium toxicity in a client taking lithium for suppose a person is on lithium treatment okay uh, you know that in psychiatric patients we sometimes recommend the lithium as well okay so hyponatremia will precipitate the lithium toxicity so you will monitor those clients very critically okay so these are the interve interventions that you will take for the patients of the hyponatremia let's talk about hypernatremia hyper means excessive that means sodium level above 145 135 to 145 so above 145 this will be state called hypernatremia okay so causes are dead eye or dd whatever you want to learn it learn it okay so from d you have decreased sodium excretion like of course when uh, a state of high sodium created when there is decreased excretion of it like uh, you are taking corticosteroids or cushing syndrome cushing syndrome is inability to kidney to excrete the potassium and sodium okay and kidney diseases so many kidney diseases as well and from i you have increased sodium intake when you are taking a high salt diet that will also lead to what hypernatremia okay from d you have decreased water intake for suppose you are not taking water like uh, you are fasting or nothing per mouth so this will also cause the state of the hypernatremia now from i we have increased fluid loss okay you are uh, your fluids are very okay uh, let's consider it uh, the hyponatremia was caused by overload of fluid when fluids are too much in your body and this is called increased fluid loss when there is less fluid in your body like increased rate of metabolism fever hyperventilation diaphoresis watery diarrhea diabetic insipidus okay so diabetes insipidus is a kind of disease okay in which the water is lost too much okay so these are the causes now if you talk about sign and symptom you eat a lot of fried food that is why you get hypernatremia because fried food contains high salt okay so this is you can remember it from fried so from f you have fever or flushed skin from r you have restlessness really agitated you will be really agitated or irritated for some reason okay and increased fluid retention your fluid will be more retained edema because uh, there is high level of fluid this will also cause edema okay swelling and extremely confused and extreme thirst okay because when there is too much salt in the diet you obviously feel a little bit higher th uh, thirst than usual okay and decreased urine output and uh, dry mouth or skin okay so these are when the increased fluid retention when fluid is more retaining in your body obviously there is decreased urine output okay and this will cause to dry mouth or skin okay so these are the sign and symptoms now what are the interventions if we particularly talk about it uh, first is same as that of monitor all other systems okay if the cause is fluid loss if the hypernatremia is caused by the fluid loss prepare to administer infusions because you will get, uh, you will obviously administer fluids when there is a condition of fluid loss okay if the cause is inadequate renal excretion that means uh, uh, kidneys are not working properly and they are not excreting sodium properly okay so then we prepare to administer diuretic which excretes sodium we are going to particularly choose that diuretic which will help in uh, excretion out of the sodium as well okay restrict sodium intake we will restrict that particular foods that are the sources of the uh, sodium okay isotonic or hypotonic solution such as 0.45 ns normal saline give it slowly as brain tissue is at the risk due to the shifting of fluids back into the cell so what happen you will administer the isotonic or the hypotonic solutions like 0.45% normal saline okay give it slowly 
you will give it slowly because brain tissue are at the risk of uh, due to shifting of fluids back into the cell now you are shifting the fluids directly back into the cell so this will lead to a risk to the brain tissues okay always remember that the cell is dehydrated with hypernatremia because cell is dehydrated that's why you are uh, when you are giving infusions or a hypotonic or isotonic solution obviously they will move into your fluid the fluid will shift into the cell this will pose a, uh, pose a threat to the brain okay so always remember the cell is dehydrated with hypernatremia so give it give the fluid slowly okay now it's over and thank you for watching hope you like it do like share and subscribe my channel and thank you